and going live. Yes! Hey hacksters! Uh, I've been a little bit AWOL lately because I had this huge terrible cold so we'll see how long my throat holds out. But I decided to come in late today and mess around with this tiny Pico board <laughs> sent to us by Daryl at Crowd Supply. Love these packages, so cool. And uh, he's also taken to giving us little jokes. He's very big into jokes. So uh, these tiny Pico boards arrived in a box labeled uh, Big Terra, now in matte black. Uh, he sent us a pre-production version, like a sample version a few months ago, maybe not that long ago, but a while ago, long enough for me to feel guilty about not having done a video about it yet. And I unboxed it the other day as part of a large package from Crowd Supply, so I'm really excited to finally get to play with some of this stuff because that's much more fun than just taking it out of boxes, I think we'll all agree. Um, yeah, so this is a teeny tiny little dev board based on the ESP32, more specifically the ESP32 Pico D4, which is something that we've encountered before. Um, where is my window? There we go. Uh, so here's a tiny Pico page on Crowd Supply. As it is Fundum Friday, we, it is a board that is currently funding for the next 19 days, and I'm sure will be available after that as well. They were going for $100, they've made almost $26,000, it's going well. Congratulations, unexpected maker. Uh, <clears throat> so the original one <clears throat> is in this fairly boring green color, uh, but that was just the pre-production version. This is, the new one is matte black. It's gorgeous, and it comes preloaded with a bunch of example code and the MicroPython firmware so that you can talk MicroPython to it. And we'll get to what that is in just a second. <clears throat> it also comes with a 3D printed uh, little thingamajig to stabilize the Wi-Fi antenna on here because it's an ESP32, it has Wi-Fi, and it has an onboard APA102 aka dot star LED if you follow the uh, Adafruit terminology, that, and the whole thing is pre-programmed with this code to sort of cycle it through a rainbow pattern, which is really nice. I love demo code, yes! Um, <coughs> the pre-production version came with demo code too, but it just sort of flashed different colors. Um, more comparisons here. We've got the old version here, and apparently the new version, here is an, a little note that came with it, that said that the new version, um, <clears throat> that is the production version, will have a solder jumper on the back that allows you to cut power to the PS RAM if you want to save about 100 microamps for a battery project and don't need the extra RAM, which is pretty cool. Options, yay! <clears throat> um, there were also, there was an issue with how the APA 102 was set up, which only really affected if you wanted the LED to be off and you were still sending it different types of instructions. Um, yeah, and they make a lot of notes here about how warm it gets, both here in the little uh, paper doodad here <laughs> and uh, down further on this page at the bottom, it talks about tiny pico and heat. Here we go. Uh, and yeah, so it is a, an incredibly powerful SIP system in a package for its size, and when running Wi-Fi continuously, it gets hot. And because the Tiny Pico is small, there's not a lot of space, space for the heat to transfer to. There is nothing to be alarmed about. Even when running hot, everything is well within spec. It's just something that we wanted everyone to be aware of. So yeah. Um, be careful of how you enclose it and stuff like that, but don't freak out. You're not going to be able to cook a miniature egg on it, as he says on here. <laughs> but it's still notice noticeable when touched. Um, what else have we got? Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, we've seen the ESP32 Pico D4 before, and uh, I did this workshop back in the day uh, on using it with Mongoose OS when I first got my hands on a board that used this chip, which was, uh, there was a, a workshop that they ran at the AWS mm, pop-up loft in San Francisco, and that's from ages ago now. Like, when is this from? Uh, it's video number seven on our website, so it's been a while. We're at like three to five hundred, yeah, November 2017. Um, and I was wearing a sweet hat. But this is using Mongoose OS, which is probably still an option for if you want another thing to do with the Tiny Pico. 
Um, you can probably still use Mongo OS, Mongo's OS, just look up this old tutorial and uh, it'll be great. I think I put it on a hackster as well. <sighs> anyway, um, so MicroPython is a version of Python that is optimized to run on microcontrollers. As the name implies, it's slimmed down and it's got some extra little hardware compatible specialness. Uh, what do they say? It's a lean and efficient implementation of the Python 3 programming language that includes a small subset of the Python standard library and is optimized to run on microcontrollers and in constrained environments. Um, yeah, cool. Oh, they have their own Pine board, huh? Aims to be as compatible with normal Python as possible to allow you to tra transfer code with ease from the desktop to a microcontroller or embedded system. Huh, interesting. I haven't actually seen this before. Huh! Is this from ages ago? Is it current? What's the deal? Look at all those pins! Wow! Nice! <laughs> um, so, you might be familiar with CircuitPython, which is Adafruit's sort of forked version of MicroPython that has some extra goodness that is... Uh, it runs on the Circuit Playground Express, and you can also run MicroPython on the, make, or the uh, BBC Microbit. However, they're not exactly compatible because Adafruit wanted more features, so in their typical sort of go-do-it uh, methodology, they have gone and done it, uh, built their own version. So you can also go to tinypico.com to find information about this board. I'm going to show you the first steps of getting started with this because that's what I've done this evening. And uh, I think it's really fun. I have gotten the REPL working, which is the read, evaluate, print loop. It allows you to talk, basically chat to your board as though, yeah, it were, you know, over serial, basically. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, through the command line. I have not yet gotten to the point where I can just upload Python files and have it run them, but that is a subject for another night. It's already 10.30. Um, just before we jump in here, here is the board, or the board ships with this wonderful explainer card that shows you what the different pins are and stuff. On the back there's a bunch of stuff about the specs. Very nice, very nice. Um, and it ships with, actually the new one shipped with both male and female headers, which is very nice. So you can choose. I usually leave things without headers and solder directly to the board, but that's because I am impatient and I don't want to prototype a bunch before I, I usually have an idea of what I want to do in mind before. Yeah, anyway, I, breadboarding, ugh, I hate it. Anyway, um, and it ships also with two different sizes of JST battery connectors for rechargeable LiPos, which is fantastic. I have already adapted one. Um, ooh, should I unplug it? Maybe I should unplug it first. Okay, whoa, what fell? I don't know, haha. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so here's the one that I have modified a little bit. Um, I have added the large JST connector so I could stick this battery on. And it doesn't seem to be charging though. That's interesting. What if I hit the reset button? No. Maybe there's something wrong with the battery though. I think this one was already rejected for other purposes, other reasons. Uh, and there's a button on here that I attached to the reset and ground pins, which you will understand why I did that in just a second. So I'm going to actually put a longer USB cable on this so I can show you what it's doing. Do, 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 do. There we go. That little orange LED comes on and stays on stably only when I have the LiPo plugged in. And I think for various reasons that we'll see also in a second that um, it does detect the battery and it does seem to be charging it. I'm just not sure what, what the deal is. The battery is not puffy or anything. It's just, it's just obstinate. I don't know. 
So let's take a look. I have just published the results of my Getting Started Adventures. And you can find that in a link in the description to this video, as per usual. And that includes screenshots of the uh, command line environment, which is not very exciting yet. I haven't got a bunch of pictures up, but I wanted to have it for you to reference in case you're curious. What I'm doing here is following one of Unexpected Maker's tutorials. I'm uh, not yet started on this R shell thing, which is what they recommend for the next step of uploading Python code. But I have gotten as far as getting the REPL up and running. So uh, if you're curious about that, check out micro MicroPython number one, Let's Get Started, which is also linked in the description to the video. Fancy that. Um, so let's take a look. I have this plugged into my computer, and how do I talk to it? What I've done is I had to update the firmware on this because it didn't like to actually give me a prompt to type in commands. But now it's all happy and nice. So what I'm going to do on here is I am in my tiny pico folder, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't have to be in that directory for it to do stuff. There's not going to be a ton to look at on the board itself. Just, well, I don't know. We should see if uh, we can get the thing. Having had to update the firmware, that meant that I deleted all the libraries and preloaded code off of it which means that it would be a while for me to figure out how to reload that onto the board and do anything really cool. But what I can show you is that we're talking MicroPython micro to it and it's responding. So what I'm going to do is say ls slash dev slash tt. I'm on a Mac, by the way, dot star. And this is going to show me what ports I have available. Um, and it's this one. A lot of Arduino boards and such show up as this uh, USB to UART um, Scilabs port. It's uh, just talking serial over this. So what I'm going to do is say screen that port and then 115200, which is the baud rate that basically tells the computer what uh, rate the data is being transmitted but like by the board and what it's expecting to receive data at. So it's sort of like a communication frequency, so boop. And I get nothing, which is expected. Uh, and then I'm going to hit this reset button that I've added on here, boop. And now we get some stuff. Yay! So um, we've got, actually, what if I, OK, cool. We just need one extra little line here. Mm. We have this reset happened. Booting, da, 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 da. And on here you have all the information about what it's doing and stuff. And at the very bottom of the window, trying to get to shorten. There we go. Uh, we have our command prompt. Yay! Uh, ooh, actually, what happens if I say help? A bunch of stuff. Delightful. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, cool! It actually is telling me how to talk to the GPI opens. That's very exciting. Oh, well, cool. Because what I wanted to do is basically build a new version of a project I built ages ago. This can count as a throwback Thursday as well because I was sick yesterday. Uh, this hypnos pendant thing is something that I've sort of done a few different iterations of. And it basically uh, gives you a little haptic vibration every one hundredth of a day, which is about 14.4 minutes, basically a quarter of an hour. And um, basically prompts you to check in with yourself and see if you're like being mindful or productive or whatever you want to be uh, and realign your goals or just like sort of notice how you're spending your time. I just noticed there's a tech shop chair in the background there. Oh. Super throwback. Anyway, this old version was based on the light blue bean. Also a throwback. That board has been discontinued. Uh, it was such a good board, too. But it's basically just a timer with a haptic motor on it. And this would be super easy to do with the ESP32. I mean, honestly, this is... Like, the, the, the Tiny Pico is way overkill for this, because it can do Wi-Fi and stuff as well. But uh, I think it'd be interesting to try. 
as a very basic sort of IoT hello world type of thing. Um, so anyway, if I just say print, and this is in Python 3, so it's that print uh, formatting. Print hello world. Then we get hello world back, and that's beautiful. And that's this little guy doing that. So cool. So the next steps for me are to figure out how to get GPIO control and how to upload and run files so that they'll like it'll automatically run its like main.py or whatever file whenever it's plugged in. And then after that, I'll have to figure out some kind of a Wi-Fi project to do with this. Actually, I found some really cool ones on Hexter already. Um, why didn't I open these up before? <laughs> uh, let's see. There was like a really cool, yeah, ESP to ES32 to ESP32 communication over the internet. Oops. Uh, this one looks really cool. It's by Dominic. There's a ton of other really cool projects that I found. Uh, and this is just a regular ESP32, but I think it'll also work on the Pico D4 version. Um, if we just click on this here in the bill of materials. We're being pretty slow because I'm streaming. <laughs> um, that is not true. There are not no projects. Bum, 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 bum. ESP32. Let's just go there and look at the products. There are other versions of the ESP32. Eh. Well, anyway, oh wait, here we go. I think our project count for that page might be weird. Ah, oh, it's being a jerk. <laughs> I don't know why it's being a jerk. But um, anyway, there's a ton of really cool projects out there that I would love to try. And uh, I will pull those up for you another time and probably throw them in the description to this video as well. For now, I'm going to see if there's any comments. Um, yeah, and then wrap up and maybe try and poke at this a little bit more, maybe get that R shell thing running tonight. In which case, I will update the getting started tutorial. Martin says, hi and good morning, hello. Jay says, love so many microcontrollers. Yes, we do too. Um, Stefano says, I played pledged for two units with a prototype shield. One of the unit is a gift for a colleague who loves Python. Fantastic, I also love Python. I'm not the best like, I'm not really a software person in my own consideration, so I love Python uh, and I love JavaScript for robots. Actually, both of those are being pretty popular for uh, microcontrollers and robots right now, so I'm excited about it. Um, and as Stefano mentioned, there are actually a ton of different prototype shields you can get for this uh, on the Tiny Pico site. I think they mentioned some of them. Uh, for example, the three up shield sort of multiplies what you can do. The proto shield, we've got the Grove I squared C shield pinout. So you've got three Grove connectors for the seed Grove kits uh, modules, which are like, you know, um, actuators and sensors and things that speak R squared C and have this wonderful um, standardized library and connector that make it really easy. Um, you've got a real time clock for all those projects that want to actually know what time it is all the time. An audio shield. Very exciting! It's got a, I think it's got a built-in microphone and speaker, or maybe just the buzzer. Just the buzzer. But um, you can switch easily between the onboard buzzer and soldered in external speakers. And then there's a play shield, which has buttons and a screen and a switch and all that good stuff. Yeah, so there's all these, all these fun shields that you can get for this thing. Thanks for mentioning that, Stefano. Someone says, hi from Saigon. Hello. <laughs> My weird timing means I get to talk to people from all over the world and I love it. <laughs> Martin says, I checked in Python a bit. Oh my God, you can do very great things in the console. Hacker scene, very popular. Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not sure you can speak basic to this, um, Martin, but 
uh, maybe someday. For now, it's MicroPython, and it's awesome. So again, check it out. It is the Tiny Pico. You can get yours for the low, low price of whatever it is on this page. <laughs> uh, you can get one for $26. You can get two for $45. Four for $79, so you can tell the price is going down. Um, and then the play pack is for 45 bucks, which comes with the play shield and things like that. Mm. And then I think all the shields for 55, which is not bad. $9 shipping worldwide. That is not bad either. So yeah, go check out the Tiny Pico. Thank you so much, Daryl and all of Crowd Supply and also Unexpected Maker, Team, Sean, etc. Uh, for sharing these with us. I can't wait to do cool stuff with them. And uh, sometime when it's not super late and I'm not recovering from a cold, I'm gonna go through the rest of that tutorial and uh, figure out how to load my own code on there and have it run perpetually uh, and have multiple of these things talk to each other. It's gonna be fantastic. I'll have a little swarm of things. Ah, I love it. Okay. Have an awesome night and a great weekend. I'm gonna be in Los Angeles for the next few days for the Not Impossible Awards event, which is very exciting. So um, stay tuned on our social channels for that, actually. Uh, not Impossible Awards. Um, sort of as the culmination of this contest that we did. Um, and I'm really excited to see what kind of solutions people have come up with for different ways of saving the world. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun. So yeah, all around the UN Sustainable Development Goals. This is gonna be super fun. So watch out for Hackster.io on Instagram, Twitter, etc. And we'll be putting up some content from that. I will see you next week. Ciao.